All right. Hello, and welcome to the Tuesday, October 1st uh, Select Board meeting. The board is present minus Linda, town manager, town clerk, various members of the town. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from September 17th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? One abstention. Tom abstains. All right. First, public comment. Anybody wish to make a public comment? All right, I will close public comment. We have no public hearings, no reports from committees, department reports. Jody, our director of public works, please. Oh, we'd love your. Hello. Uh, where I should start. So we'll start with transfer station. I'm sure, you're all aware of the explosion of influx of uh, developments and new people in the town. Uh, my plan is to work on a fourth lane at the transfer station. That's the outer side of the red building. Um, Todd says it's pretty busy down there, and sometimes the traffic gets out in the road. So you may see some funding in the future for that, to develop a driveway or uh, the roundabout the outside of that building out there. Uh, Todd's doing a pretty good job down there, and uh, things seem to be going well. Um, as far as public works goes, uh, we are down two guys at the point at, the, at this time. And you're doing a pretty good job trying to keep up on things. So these mean the three working guys, a foreman and a mechanic. We're gonna, we're gonna auction off some surplus equipment coming up soon, got a truck. Uh, some gas pumps, the new gas pumps are in. Some money that we got allocated last year for that. The two new generators are finally up and running. One up here and one up the public works department. We are preparing for plow gear and getting ready for winter. We'll be doing a lot of leaf collecting down Pine Hill due to ditching and water runoff. So the, so the culverts don't get all plugged up and the water usually runs off into the street. Some people do call from other areas and see us doing that and they want us to come to their house and suck up all their leaves as well, which is a service we do not normally offer to just homeowners, just pretty much out of the ditch lines. Um, we finished up Little River Paving, uh, that road is completely done. Uh, Long Swamp is going to need a, a surface layer, um, probably from the bridge to Alley Pond. Waiting on Libby Scott to finish Bell and Rollins. Uh, they did tell me September. Now they're telling me the middle of October. Uh, we only do have the one contracted um Paving company. I, I hope to make that change next year. Uh, we get kind of behind the eight ball. I, I really can't work on a plan because they're kind of overextended with four or five other towns. So when we get some kind of schedule together, it always changes whether it's them or the weather. So it's just hard to keep track of all that stuff. As far as making a plan, we hear about a 10-year plan or a five-year plan. It's just difficult with one contractor to try to fulfill them needs. I am working on a um, proposal with Seawall. It is an engineering company. They suggested a three- and five-year plan because they're familiar with the same situation. Uh, that paperwork is yet to come to my desk, but when I do get it, I'll pass it along. I 
And then as far as facilities go, just some things coming up with that. Uh, we got a, uh, we're looking at grant monies for mini splits, but with that being said, I would recommend trying to get some new windows, whether it's a one or three year plan. Uh, I'm, I'm shrink wrapping a lot of them during the winter, but during the summertime, I'm sure the air conditioner stuff is uh, drafty as well. So it's just something to think about moving forward. That's all I got. Is um, the, uh... I believe there's money in the budget this year for waterproof in the town hall. Is uh, where is that stand? That that bid is one out. I'm waiting for the bids to come back to make a determination. But that went out last week, the week before. That was an amazing bid. Yeah. I think it was a couple yeah. weeks ago, and it's due back towards the end of the month. It's something that you know that we've talked about for a long time. We just hadn't put the money in the budget until this year. So yeah, I'm waiting for the bids. <clears throat> yeah. As I recall, the last time we, or the last couple times we put out um, paving to bid, Libby Scott was the only one to respond. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, like we 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 even made it so that we could approve the bidding or, or approve it earlier in the cycle so they could get done sooner. Like uh, before, we had to wait until like we passed. Yeah, like yeah, we were trying to get it done earlier in the in the year so that we could get them on it sooner um do you have other pavers in mind that you want to work with or well seawall said that they could suggest some things when that when that proposal comes to me um they said they when they see the the schedule and what we're going to probably do in the next three to five years that uh paving companies might be a little more interested in in coming down on the kind of dollar amount and a schedule that we might have. Okay. Uh, I did talk to Libby Scott and and we did have uh, uh, quite a few monies left over in that account because of the rainy season last year and I wanted to get started in June. Uh, they didn't come here until July. Uh, they, their excuse to me at that point was that they had a lot of last year's season stuff to catch up to. And uh, I'm just not happy with the situation that I am in with that because I've still five roads I wanted to try to get touched up this year before winter. And you really don't want to be paving in October. Yeah, in the past, in the past we put it out to bid. And uh, you know, it used to be Pike all the time that took the bid, but about six or seven years ago, they stopped bidding. Uh, as we had, uh, what was it, Gorham Sand and Gravel that did mm -hmm. the work over uh, Moulton Street? Is you know maybe since they did that work maybe we can get them interested again. You know I know that in the past they had you know talked about it, but as you said yeah. with a, a three to five year plan, if we have something more concrete, you know they'd be probably more willing to look at it. So, so Seawall is going to grade all our roads for us as far as good, bad, and worse. Uh, give us kind of a perspective on where we should start uh, and, and go from there. It's an engineering firm as well. Um, so again, when I see that, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it along. Email is fine, or yeah. Okay. yeah where are they out of, Jody? Uh, I'm not sure. The, the I think they're right out of Portland. Oh, it's part of the DOT stuff that we see and that we learn. That I excuse me, I learn in these classes that we go to. Um, so that's just some other contracting stuff that uh, we we got a source from. Back to the plowing, you said that you're down. Two or three guys. I'm down two employees right now in Public Works. Uh, we're hoping to. We have some good interviews, um, and we're seeing where they're going. At this point, and talking about plowing, it also takes about two years to get big plow equipment. The, some of the body stainless steel stuff is actually out 400 days. So moving forward, um, if we were to order a plow it would take two years to come in and it, and then we pay for it then we don't pay for it until we receive it that will be coming up at budget time there's a couple of couple of trucks that need to be replaced need to be looked at to be we ordered a truck in 21 we got that in october 23 we ordered a truck in 22 we just got that in august 24. we have some old trucks that are 30 40 thousand dollars worth of repairs done yes that too 
that we could okay. possibly replace. Man. I just wanted to pass on some other information. I did see some uh, previous meetings on, on the YouTube video stuff. Uh, the speed limits in any town can only be set by state DOT, just moving forward, trying to make some decisions on some of these requests about putting up 25 mile an hour speed limit signs. That's all I got. Any questions? And just, you know, talk, going back to paving, one of my bugaboos is the roads that only have a base coat on it. Sure. And, um, what are the plans for those? Again, uh, Libby Scott, I had those on the schedule, and uh, I, I keep getting pushed out. They're working in five they're other schedule. towns. They're doing state state right. bidding, and they're doing state contracts. That they, When I called them two days ago, they said, well, we're in the state contract, and we got to get this done within two weeks. And I said, well, I'd like to have one of those contracts. And I said, oh, I did sign one of those. And the phone call didn't end up too well. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, you're okay. all set. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up, Chief. Yep. <laughs> no, no, we took the Chief first. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I uh, just want to take a, a minute before I get into my long list of informational things that I think you really need to know about. I'd like to introduce Steve Plant. Steve is one of my deputy chiefs. He's in charge of the department operations. I don't know if you've met him or not, but you have at this point. So. Is there a relation? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, we're all related. Thank you, Jody. Thanks, Jody. Thank uh, I think the first thing that I should bring up, um, I think we need to talk about staffing. Presently, we have six full-time people, career people. We have 23 on call and four per diem at this time. Excuse me. We're running four shifts, 24-hour shifts, with two shifts staffed with two career, two shifts staffed with one career and a per diem when I can get that per diem. Since July, the problem is uh, you were gracious enough, or the town was, to provide us with two additional full-time positions. Uh, it took us a while to fill those. Uh, we ended up filling those from the on-call force. They had the qualifications, so they were, they were the best out of the eight that we interviewed. So when I did that, I lost per diem people who were working per diem shift. So since July, uh, I've spent like $17,000 in overtime, which as far as I'm concerned, was legit because I had to have that second man coverage. And I had to do that because I didn't have enough per diems. So I have to bring in my full-time people to cover that shift. That's an issue that's gonna to continue to be an issue. Um, pay ranges, just so you know, the on-call staff make anywhere between $16 and $22 an hour. And I'm bringing this up because wages are an issue. Uh, my per diem, we're paying $21 to $25 an hour. Area towns right now have just raised that to $27. So we're in competition in trying to keep staff. Uh, Call-wise, we're up 144 calls from last year at this time. It's increasing, and I suspect it's going to increase with a, con with a building going on not only here but in, uh, in the country. Uh, so that's going to be an issue for the town. Um, if there's any questions as I get out through these, just stop me and I will try to answer them for you. We'll, we'll go back in the end. Um, grants. The SAFER grant, we had reapplied uh, for three years. Uh, we still haven't heard anything up to date today. Um, that should be announced pretty soon. I would suspect that we haven't heard anything now, so that probably will not occur. We probably won't get that grant. Could change, but as of right now. The Assistant to Fire Act grant, you're all aware that we did get a grant for air packs, 28 packs. It was 266000 Bids for those just went out today. Should be back. 
middle of October, I believe, and then they'll come to you for approval. Um, and just overall, the department staff, including myself, are being asked to conduct more uh, fire safety inspections, residential as well as commercial. I'm involved with a lot of the plans review for the planning board. I am the only one certified to do that at this point. So I'm working on trying to get other people trained, but that's an issue that's going to be coming up. Uh, that's going to need be addressed down, down the road as well. Uh, I have my senior staff working on a tentative plan, a future plan in the event that it's necessary for the department to have to take over the ambulance service. I don't suspect that's gonna happen right off quick, but we are planning for it. Uh, it's gonna take a while to put that plan together. Once that plan's done, we'll bring it to you. You can do as you please with that plan, but at least if something happens, we'll have a plan to give the town. So that's kind of long range. Uh, fire prevention week's coming up. We're going to be in the schools. Uh, we did a daycare today. Uh, we probably do around 1,500 children throughout the year, including daycares. Uh, and that's handled by two of my staff. Apparatus. Our apparatus overall, including equipment's in good shape. Uh, the chief's car, the uh, chief car, car one is need re be replaced now. It's got 89,000 and probably won't get a stick up next time. But no matter what we do, it's going to take at least a year to get anything. Truck one is the ladder truck. Uh, that's a 1995, um, 27 years old. Um, it's really nine years over the expected date. Uh, but we need to really be looking at when do we want to replace it? Yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of work on that over the last several years. Oh yeah, I can I can give you. We we've spent thousands yeah, of dollars, right. tens of thousands. Yeah. Um, the last was the steel ladder cracked, and we had to have it rewelded. But it's just age, and it's coming. To auto one of those trucks or any fire truck today, you're looking at two and a half to four years delivery. So, what kind of a price tag are you looking for that truck? Right now, you're probably looking at a million and a half at least, probably okay. even more than that. Is that the grant that you're applying for also, though? To help that's you? the grant we're looking at applying for right, this replace. coming grant season, which is coming up. But we're being told we probably have a hard time doing that. But we're going to give it a shot. It, the longer you wait, the more it's going to cost. Is that you re, when you re, when we do replace that? Is uh, would you be looking at a platform lift rather than a yeah. ladder? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're going to go that way, that's the way to go, right? Yeah, much, be, much more stable, more you know, safer for the man. Yeah. The the other thing that the chief had told me is that a ladder can't reach these new buildings being built, can't reach the top. Depending upon where we got to set up the ladder, like if you go out here and try to set a ladder up, you're not going to be able to because the the uh, oh, wow. power lines are there. Can you work around that? Somewhat, but it's not safe. So depending upon where we can place the truck, we probably might just about make the, not sure. We're gonna try it though, so I can answer that question. Well, the power lines will be buried. Actually. Power lines are an issue. But I guess those are going underground at that some point. Right. So. <laughs> Hopefully we 2025, 26. Well, one of the good things about this whole project is all those apartments are sprinkling. So, um, that's basically my review. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. I'm sure we'll be talking again at budget season. <laughs> we definitely will. It sounds like yeah. <laughs> um, when you talk about staffing, um, are you looking for, I guess, I guess just looking at it because you're saying if it's covered for the per diem and you're paying the OT, are you looking at trying to raise that per diem rate or are you looking at potentially trying to add another full-time or part-time employee? I think my recommendation would be 
at this point in time to go with two more full-time positions so I can fill those two other shifts. <laughs> That's not going to solve the problem. I should have at least four to five guys, even six at times on shift. I know that's not going to happen in town of Brewer can't afford that. But coming down the road, that's what that's what you're going to end up with, especially if you take over an ambulance. The, the ambulance and I, I can I can assure you right now that I've already been told that Stewart's ambulance, who has not charged the town anything, probably within the next year or two is going to start charging the town. How much? We don't know yet. We've talked in the past about the, the ambulance service in town and, and you guys taking it over. And um, if I remember correctly, is is the way the insurances and things are similar to what Stuart works with now is it can be a a money making venture. You know, correct? I would suspect that you and I talked years ago about that. My understanding from what I'm hearing is that the charges that the ambulance service makes to medicare doesn't what they pay medicare pays isn't half of what they get charged so that would have to be looked at tom back then yes it did work today uh, no uh, it's not working that way i think over a period of time it would pay for itself through the town but it's going to take a big expense on the town to get started in that in that area I'm not suggesting we do that at this point. I'm just giving you a heads up. It's coming. The uh, a new fire truck. Do you pay when you order? Or do you pay when you receive it? Well, it depends upon what kind of an agreement we come with a manufacturer. I would suspect today they would probably want some down payment. Mm -hmm. um, when we audited our last two new trucks, I don't think we gave them anything down. It was just, here's the contract, we'll build my trucks. It took about what, a year? I, I can say I work at a local fire department full time. And we just purchased a new fire. There you go. <laughs> I work at a local uh, full time fire department in neighboring Berwick. And we just purchased a, or just went into an agreement with. Um, a manufacturer for a new fire engine because the the price of it just to get the engine for the vehicle was went up like thirty or forty. It was going to go up thirty or forty thousand dollars. So they signed a contract to after this last budget to sign the contract. So the vehicle won't be in for two or three years, um, but they they'll recognize the price of it today, and it won't change when they get it in three or four years. So that was one of the reasons to bump it up because they would have had to wait. Two or three years from now, and then another two or three years, probably more than that by then, to receive the vehicle. So you're looking five, six years out. <clears throat> Did the town have to pay anything up front? No, no. usually uh, they just signed the agreement and they are, they'll honor it. My experience is that they may ask you to pay for the chassis, but other than that, they'll hold off on everything until you get yeah. to deliver it. Some of the vendors do that. Once they get the chassis, they ask you just to pay for the chassis. Which is in the contract. So, I would say at minimum during budget season, knowing that this is coming up, we should look at putting maybe some more money away into the savings account, um, knowing that we're going to have potentially two million dollar bill coming in for new trucks. At some point, yep. So I was kind of thinking about the um, positions a little, a little bit more. So you're thinking two full time regular positions, firemen. Right. But, two, but, two more full time. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. And then the others you said are getting sixteen to twenty two an hour, and we should be competitive with the other surrounding towns. And. Okay. To get somebody else to be an inspector, what would that take? Uh, training, you know, oh. more training, getting people interested so, in going okay. and doing it. You know, with four people on shift, uh, they all have their different assignments to take one of those persons out and send them to school for two weeks. I got to cover that shift. That's all overtime. Whoever comes in and covers that, it's overtime. 
because when a full timer is out, he has to be replaced by a full time, which okay. that creates the overtime issue. So it can be somebody in house. We don't need a different person to do that. It can no. be somebody. All right. I think with all the development happening in town, especially going on across the street, eventually we're going to have to look at at least two more for the fire and probably a couple more for police with the amount of people that are going to be coming to town soon. Well, like I said, the calls have gone up 144 calls this time last year. So they're increasing, and I suspect they're going to continue the increase. Is there any pattern to the increase? Is it a certain type no, of it's, it's It's more a medical aid. Uh, three quarters of our response is uh, medical aid calls, uh, which is good because it's paid off in a lot of cases. It takes an ambulance anywhere from six to eight minutes to get on scene. We're there within two to three minutes, and it's paid off. It has. I can speak personally. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions for the fire chief? No, you're just warning us. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we will <laughs> we will definitely be going over all of this again at budget time. Yeah, that is used to that at budget time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is the pre one. This is the softening up. Soft yeah. <laughs> this is the softening up for when we get to the budget time and yes. Yeah, so that way that you don't have the shock and awe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get you a copy of that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Jeremy. Thank you, PCM Thank director. You, Chief. Hi. You have a five minute department report for us. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We've just switched our um, the way we're broadcasting on channel ninety five. So in in switching that, we um, we bumped ourselves. So we'll have that fixed for the uh, planning board. So. I I, uh, I want to quickly update everybody on where we're at with the, the website update, which is uh, coming up. Uh, just quickly going through, touching on some of our past stuff. You know, obviously we've had some uh, some issues in the past with, um, you know, <clears throat> communication being maybe maybe something that, that people felt like we needed to work on and uh, improve. So that's, uh, that has been the focus. Uh, moving forward, you know, we, we worked on obviously the brand starting in 2017. I think you all first started changing the signs for that first, uh, bring your lawn chairs to Sullivan square. We, uh, launched that new brand, started doing signs, as you can see, social media for a quarterly went out, uh, more merch. And an upgrade on the merch, and then obviously touch points like uh, business cards and uh, stationery. Public Works took on um, the brand for their trucks and for their um, you know vehicles and such, and then um, started working with uh, uh, Parks Parks and Rec, the Rec Department, Trash Bash, Spring Cleanup, Easter Egg, the Camp Out, obviously Lawn Chairs. Slightly separate brand, different colors, but also, you know, very dialed in brand specific historical society through Envision Berwick also has had, uh, you know, branding that's very specific. And obviously everybody's um, dealt with the Berwick bi-monthly. I think that's been a huge success story following the, the difficulties of getting word out through the Berwick quarterly and the uh, every door direct mailer. We have had excellent feedback from there, the signs, you know, obviously we lost our sign this year. We're going to be putting that sign back up, probably bigger and better with uh, larger messaging on both sides next summer. Uh, but the transfer station sign is in progress and we'll have messaging that should be ready shortly. We're hoping to get that in the ground before frost. Same with the um, boat launch. My YouTube thumbnails, you can't really see this, but I, I can share this with you guys. Um, they have changed significantly. They're a lot more legible. They were, you know, um, just a little scattershot. So we've dialed that in and that will continue for, for our broadcast as well as YouTube. And which brings me to where we're at with the, the website itself. The, the, the website is, and, and we've talked about this, is adopting the, the Berwick quarterly or Berwick bi-monthly approach with the Berwick daily. It will have a blog style 
news from all departments coming out so that, you know, as information is available on a daily basis, there will be information that not only is coming through the website, but then is blasted to our social media. So, you know, our, our, our Facebook, for example, will look like this. It'll, it'll be, you know, each town department will be under the town of Berwick Facebook page. And so those departments will have their information all available through the town of Berwick that will then link back to literally articles with information from everything from registering for camp to, um, you know, uh, uh, drop your paint off at the transfer station day. So all town departments, we will take on that communication. They'll keep their Instagram accounts and their separate social media accounts for, I'm sorry, their separate websites. Police and fire will maintain their own separate Facebook pages. And, and but this, so Rec, Public Works, Envision Berwick, all of that will BCM all fall under the town of Berwick. And that's, that is uh, already been presented to the uh, department heads uh, at the last department head meeting and uh, something we're working towards and should um, the website should be live this winter. It's been in progress for about six months. So we're, we're very close, very excited about it. This is, uh, uh, you know, not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. This is what a lot of towns are doing. This is what I've learned from the, you know, with classes I've taken with the main municipal association. Um, and we're really following the model of Rochester, which has done a great job with this. But, you know, I'm, I'm in communication with a lot of my contemporaries and other towns around us. And, and this seems to be a, um, a more efficient way to communicate with the public and to end what has been a, a, a complicated time going from the mode where we communicated through just TV, essentially, in the past, to figuring out how social media will best serve the public. So the new sign at the transfer station, it will have like message board on it? Or yes. Yep. Like vote this Tuesday, things like yes, that? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and uh, really, as part of, you know, what BCM does, yeah. that messaging will be part of, you know, I will personally go there and change that messaging. And as we develop more signs, that will be part of our responsibility because, you know, communication is, that is communication. It's really important. Well, it's what everybody complains about, but, you know. Well, there's lots to complain about. Yeah, there's, there's... <laughs> and the transfer station is the best place for yes. communication because you'll get everybody. Well, you hope. We we think we're we think we get everybody with a sign at the town hall, but we don't. That's right. Um, what other messaging signs are are you thinking about? Well, we we do have the one did have the one right across from Gateway, and there was a um, we had an accident with uh, with a. Uh, 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 landscaping. Mm -hmm. uh, so that sign is being replaced. Uh, I believe that, what, you know, as we work with code for where the placement and the height of the sign, uh, it, that was the first sign that, that we did to Envision Berwick, you know, like five or six years ago. So this is the first one. And, and we really went off of the, the two granite posts, but it was low and it was small. And I think it could be bigger. And it was also only had messaging on one side. And I believe that the messaging has been very successful. I'd like to see it have messaging on both sides so that either direction you're going to be able to read, you know, vote or, you know, any other town information that we want to share that way. Jeremy, if we do this, I think we're going to stand out from the other towns. It's going to look great. Thank you very much. I'm I'm very excited about it. I think it, it the, the opportunity to, to um, really uh, move the meter for Berwick yeah, in, in one fell swoop is going to be uh, really, it does look good. I believe we have a great team working on this and um, the, the buy-in from the department has been excellent. That's going to look nice. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? You're good, Jim. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Jerry. I was just thinking about the... Uh, you know, 1999, 2000, go to a website and maybe you would update yep. like once every yep. month or a couple of weeks or even longer. You just like, like now we check a website like it hasn't updated in the past hour. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> All right, no appointments. Um, under unfinished business, we have HR manager, uh, job description, policy, directive, purchasing, and remote wor work policy. Uh, Linda's not here to, um, uh, we wanna have her here to help finalize those. So I think we should table those for right now. As well as she had email issues, so I didn't get her notes from the last meeting to incorporate. I tried to incorporate as much as I could from my absent blinded memory and my notes. We'll get those done. There's not, lucky those aren't time sensitive. Um, Tom manager report. Okay. The handicap ramp has been installed back there. It's not ready for use yet because we have to level it out to the sidewalk as well as we're looking to see where we can do the handicap spot because of the size of it, as well as we're getting quotes on widening the door up at the top. I mean, it could be used right now for somebody if they didn't need a wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's in, paid for, done off the books from a couple of years ago. The Mold Street project is done other than a few small punch list items. It looks great. They did a great job with it over there. Uh, York County Board of Assessors for Appeal, we ended up losing that appeal, and we will be given a notice of decision that we have to do an abatement for the two additional years so that we can go up to three. It was kind of hard to defend when it was basically our fault that we didn't see the mistake. It's 1998. Um, the requisition has been posted. We received several very good applications. I want to say we received about 15 of them. Um, we're doing interviews on the 9th and 10th, and we'll be, well, at this point, I'm going to drop that to five because one person has not responded back about an interview. Mm -hmm. um, based on research, I know this came up at the last meeting, employees are allowed to waive their lunch break. And I believe I put the documentation in your, in your packets that says where they can. The, I finished the RFP for legal, and that has gone out to bid. I did notify our current legal service that we were going out to bid. Obviously, they have a chance to bid on it. So uh, we had a pre-construction meeting regarding the drainage project. That went very well. Um, we're looking at probably starting that within the next couple of weeks. And they're hoping to be done by mid-November. I, I saw they started stockpiling materials out yeah. there. I want to say... For some reason, either the 15th or 17th rings a bell in my head as far as when they're starting and they're planning on being done before Thanksgiving. Nice. Um, I will be at the MMA conference um, the next few days. So if anybody needs me, please feel free to call me, text me. Um, I'll be up there. And that is it. <clears throat> Any questions for the town manager? I do. The ramp. Yes. You said that was a temporary ramp? It's considered a temporary ramp because you literally can take it apart and move it any way you want. Okay, but is that the ramp that's staying or are we getting a wooden that's ramp? No, that's the ramp that's staying. That's the one that's staying. So do we have any time frame on when we're going to, so that people can actually use a wheelchair there? Or? It's going to depend on when I get the bids back and we, we may have to do a warrant article for it for next year's budget because um, it's not going to be an easy thing to widen that door because of the mason and stuff. So that's why we hadn't hadn't done it in the past because that's of right. That. <laughs> <laughs> so kinda, if, 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 you know, if, a, a, modern, a modern day wheelchair probably could fit through there, but the new the newer bigger electric ones would have a my high my biggest fear in, in wanting to get that in is got the bid where have something go on upstairs and we right. lose power and the generator doesn't kick in and we need to get out of the building. We can certainly get people out of the building that way if we need it rather than going down the stairs. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, the waving the lunch. Yep. Is that per week, per day, or do you just always say I'm not having lunch today? Or how does that work? It's once you sign the waiver, then you wave the lunch for the entire time unless you want to sign it. Okay. But it's not, oh, I didn't today or I did today. No. It's either you did or you didn't. No. And I and I know, like I said, there was questions at the last meeting of whether the Department of Labor accepted that or not. So thank you. All right. Select board communications. We have a couple here. Comcast is discontinuing cable cards, whatever that is. 
Um, the Dunn Farm has um, received some, this is for a grant, I guess. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, they received a grant, I guess. And the um, state is giving us their valuations. And uh, that's about it, really. Accounts payable. All right. We have the payroll warrant number 29 from September 26th in the amount of $87,144.49. Counts payable warrant number 30 from September 30th in the amount of $140,665.63. Counts payable warrant number 31 from September 30th in the amount of $1,508,810.71. Payroll warrant number 32 from October 3rd in the amount of $90,092.99. Counts payable warrant number 33 from October 1st in the amount of $61,652.79. And accounts payable warrant number 34 in the amount of $30,526.21.56. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Julio. New business. Um, dog ordinance. Rachel is not here. We've contacted her to let us know when she's planning on coming. We haven't heard back from her yet. So. Okay. Um, deal with that for right now. Fee change policy. At the last meeting, you guys had wanted me to come up with some kind of a policy to start looking at around if we want to change fees in the town for things. So yep. this is first go at it, first draft. All right. Any comments about the first draft? I didn't, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was pretty. So I liked it. You liked it. I, did. I was like, oh, good start here. It's on our list of best reads. Yes. Um, okay. How about you? Seems a little light, but you know. Light, but it's a start. Yeah. But it's light. So since the public can't see what we're doing, here's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The board, the board last meeting had asked me to come up with a policy on if we need to change, I'm going to call them user fees, but like right. fees for the rec, building permit fees, planning board fees, come up with a policy on how we were going to do that in certain criteria and what we were going to do, a maximum amount that they could go up in a year and also how we were going to notify the public. So yeah. the policy that I came up with gave criteria of why we would increase it, whether it's um, inflation, increase in costs, increase in improvements, facility. Um, to determine the process would be a cost-benefit analysis, market research, consultation with the stakeholders. The board will make the final decision about any fee increase, and the board is required to hold one public hearing prior to a fee increase. Uh, communication plan would be timely notification within 30, 30 days, uh, ex uh, clear expectations, and a feedback mechanism, which would be the public hearing. Review and adjustment, there'd be annual review of fees. Flexibility to adjust fees up to 10% yearly does not mean they will go up 10%. They may not go up at all, but that's the most that they can go up. Uh, the other considerations, customer impact. Be mindful of potential impact of fee increases on customers, especially for those who may find it be financially vulnerable. Alternative revenue source, explore other revenue generating opportunities to minimize the need for fee increases um, and regulatory compliance, ensure that the fee increases comply with all applicable laws and regulations. Yeah, I think a lot of why we requested this was, or I think when it kind of started, it was like, you know, looking at RAC, there's a lot of need to go up, but not to say, okay, well, this year we're going up this and, you know, residents are prepared for it. And also next year we come back and say, hey, also we're going to go up 20% yeah. this year, you know, so it's more to protect the residents in the town from 
departments come in and just saying, okay, we're going to keep Being doing increased. this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what the one comment I was going to make is the, you know, under the review and adjustments is the adjust the fees up to 10% at a yearly review. Um, there may be circumstances beyond the town's control that would require us to increase more than 10%. You know, I can't say anything right off the top yeah. of my head, but, you know, whether it be supply problems or personnel problems or something, I, I just question that 10%. Well, I mean, thinking about it, I mean, just like um, for the most part, all these fees are relatively, they're relatively small compared to, say, property taxes or something like that. You know, like property taxes doesn't have a cap in terms of it. But so like, I mean, if we did need, if like there was a call for whatever reason that that summer camp just got so much right. more expensive. Well, that's an example I was going to use. Yeah. That several years ago, we increased probably 200% on summer camp fees. Yeah. So, you know, because we were charging so low before, you know, there's that, that there that we have to take that into consideration. No, I'm, I'm willing to work with that. I'm just, you know, pointing that out, that there are circumstances beyond our control that might necessitate and increase more than 10%. Do you want me to add a line in there in regards to that so that the board has that option? <clears throat> or just take 10% out, right? Well, I think uh, Linda was pretty uh, emphatic about there being a cap so people knew what was going on. But I do think there should be a mechanism for us to override it if there's anyway, material sure. proof. I like, can I can put a line in there, the, something to the effect that the Board of Select would have the authority to override the 10% due to unforeseen circumstances. Emergency circumstances. Something something, something like that, that something yeah. that we can't just override it every year because right. we want to, right. but because there's actually a material issue yep. right. that we have to deal with. Like I said, the, the example I was going to use was used with the rec fees. You know? And it wasn't just the summer camp, it was also with the sports teams and everything. We determined that we're expending a lot of money at the rec field and we needed to recoup some of that money. And that's why as we instituted the fee not only on the organizations, but also included in there the cost per child using that. So, so that would have definitely gone over the 10 percent fee. Yeah. You know, percent. So I'm just you know remembering past things that we have done that you know, would necessitate us to go over that 10%. It's helpful when you do that. So my mind is already trying to break the rules and figure out it's like, right? <laughs> if we needed to, we could invent a new fee because there's no rule about inventing a new fee. I know I thought yeah, of that too, like, but I didn't want to say it. But if there's no fee and you create a fee, it doesn't there's no 10% rule there. So. I think I'm like yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> theoretically there would be if there's no fee, you can't go up. Yeah, so just like always thinking, my, my brain just want this is looking through loopholes already. Um, Unfortunately, right. you're never gonna have a policy that doesn't have some, right. yeah, exactly. Right. 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 All right, we'll come and back to that. that I think it's a good you no know, policy, you know, go moving in the right direction. We'll, yeah, we'll let Linda That's give great. her two cents on it and let you update it a little bit. And yeah, um, next, I have the request. Given what Jody said tonight, I'd like to do a children at play sign on Evergreen Drive. I did not realize in the state of Maine, yeah. every road was governed by the DOT. And in most in the state of New Hampshire, it's only state roads. The town can do what they want. Um, no, it is, it is. I went through that when I was um, a state rep because there are several people in town that wanted roads posted and changed. And we had to go through the state to do that. So it's... Uh, but, but yeah, I know other signs. Well, there is an example I could state on Hubbard Road where decades ago the town put up a 25 mile an hour sign and the state never argued with it and it's still there. Um, is the board have any objections to me having Jody put up a children at play sign? What's the cost of a of sign? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but they're not, from what I've seen from invoices, they're not that expensive. Yeah. Talking maybe 50 bucks, 60 yeah. bucks. Maybe. I'll make a motion that we approve the children at play side for Evergreen Drive. A second. Any further discussion? 
Well, better, make it, big... better make it two signs, one at each end, <laughs> in the opposite directions. Yeah. Yeah. As many signs as he deems needed for that room. Yeah. All those in favor? All right. Um, next is the non-union pay. We're gonna table that for but when we're all then, here. yeah, when we're all here. There's not that's not a rush issue. So no. we'll it's get my the own, whole board on here for that. My own obsession with get the book getting the budget on the way. Yeah. <laughs> the budget for 2026. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, no quick claim deeds. We have an abatement for a tree growth penalty. Yep. The uh, gentleman on, Horn, on um, Horns Mill Road, he has a total acreage of 47 acres. There would be a uh, penalty of 4,576.40 to be issued, and he is aware of it. Any questions? Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. He asked if he could skip tonight. I told him I could handle it. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the tree growth penalty on tax map lot R021 7. He's pretty easy. Of $4,576.40. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? But just to let you know that that piece of property that we're talking about there abuts. Town property along the little river there. We've talked about in the past of creating another park there, but is, um, that was in the future. Is, is that the part that's also like there's no, it's like the town property is almost surrounded by private properties. Right. There, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So we, we, have, right we, have, you know, we have the right, no, we have the right, have right away. Right, okay. right. There's, there's an official right away. So that's what goes to Steve Brown's property. Okay. It goes past. No, our property out there. So there, there's uh, several houses down there on the right of way now. Yep. Um, but we own, I think, like seven or eight acres along the river there. They used to used to camp there as Boy Scouts. Yes. Second public comment. Any member of the yeah. public want to talk? Small disc golf course in, but like, we can get to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. I'll close sure. second public comment. And we don't have to do an executive session if you guys don't have anything that I want to do. Cool. Let me think. No, I don't have anything specific to come to mind. All right. Well, then, uh, with no executive business. session, I will make a motion that we. Oh, wait, other other business, not yeah. agenda items. Anybody? Just to be a bit. Nope, just no, no, no. It. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I have nothing. Um, but there's an election in a month. In case you haven't heard, so you know, vote. Don't complain about it. Now. Now. Yes. Yeah, how, how is how is the Voter registration been going, Patty. You've been getting a lot of people new registrants. Yeah, with the new online voter reg through the state, we're, I'm getting like seven a day. Wow. So I Good. hope that's going to cut down on the same day regis uh, to be elected. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're actually conducting um, to vote in the presence of the clerk. Come down, vote. You're all set, or take it with you. <laughs> I want to give Patty credit. She did a mock election with some of the uh, high school students today, and it, it was great watching them and having them learn and stuff. And she did a great job, and it was just a great. It's the first time I've seen anything like that. It was a great experience for me, so I can only imagine the experience for them. It was fun. They were a good group. Okay. Now there will be voters. We even got a, one kid to register. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 18 and a Berwick resident, so we've got him all set up and he's planning on coming back up every day. Oh, that's well, awesome. there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I'll I make will... a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Good night.